all of you guys know that I have a pretty in interesting interesting snake collection here and a majority of them are great pet snakes you guys for whether if they're from young kids to young teenagers or even just grown adults like me but with that being said though there only could be one start best starter pet snake in the group though you guys so today I'm gonna be actually talking about the few snakes that could be number one but Let's go ahead and actually share you guys which one is the best starter pet snake for ya. So certainly a species I never thought that would be considered as a great starter pet snake you guys would be rosy boas. And I'm not gonna lie to you, rosy boas I actually have, ever since I was a little kid, I've actually always wanted to have one but I've never really gotten the opportunity to believe it or not because I mean, I guess I just never really got a chance to see them in person, you know, like whether it was at reptile shows or even get to see them for sale online. But even lately, seeing them now that are for sale on the internet, it's just crazy how much the price is. Like, maybe like five, six, seven years ago, the price for a rosy bow was probably like $50 for a captive bred hatchling. But now these days, in 2022, the prices of them range average is like maybe like $150 to $200 a piece for a captive bred hatchling, which is insane because I guess now these days they are becoming pretty popular and there's also a few different morphs of rosy boas that have been produced. But the reason is that rosy boas, I guess, are considered a great starter is because of how docile they are, kind of like corn snakes and ball pythons. And again, kind of like some of these other starter pet snakes. Rosy boas actually don't get quite as large as compared to some of their slightly bigger cousins, whether it's like common boas or like rainbow boas, all those kind of species there. But ro rosy boas, they are native here to the southern, they are native here to the United States, but they're mostly found in the so far southwest portion of the US, like parts of like California, Arizona, and parts I think a little bit of Mexico as well, but they're just so neat looking animals everybody again Like I said, they don't get too big about on average is like two to three feet So not really a big snake either and also they're very easy to care for as well And they don't need a giant enclosure. That's like 40 uh, 60 gallon tank you guys I think some people I think I believe the average size enclosure for an, just a single adult could be like a 20 gallon enclosure like Lucy and Ariel have here so but really, I just think they're underappreciated. But at the same time, though, I just really have a whole have not a whole lot of luck of finding one. So, but maybe one of these days, you guys, when I get my own place here soon, hopefully in a couple of years, maybe I'll get to add one soon. So, uh, definitely an animal I definitely want to have in my possession one of these days. So, but uh, rosy boas definitely are a great pet snake to have, you guys, if you guys are considered of getting a boa. This next uh, starter snake really never came to my mind, actually, to be honest with you. Gopher snakes are absolutely an interesting species to own and to be honest with you about You know five ten years ago when I was really getting into the reptile stuff You know, I never thought gopher snakes as a starter pet snake, you know, because I always thought of them kind of being a bit of a snotty kind of snake, but so far for the last several years though with a lot of captive breeding going on across the country there are a few different morphs and mutations of gopher snakes that have been produced you know and of course there are bull snakes out there as well kind of the same way lately bull snakes have been coming pretty popular as well and gopher snakes kind of do a bit share about a few things similar to corn snakes. One thing that's for cer certain is the size. Now, gopher snakes can range about three to about five feet in length, and a minimum enclosure size you can keep them in is a 20 gallon tank, even though some people suggest for a single adult is a 40 gallon tank, which is not a bad solution also. And as many other snake species you have in the community, they do eat frozen thawed rodents, whether if it's mice or, very, or small rats even, but when it comes to babies though, when they're hatchlings, you definitely want to feed them frozen thawed pinky mice because they're so small and delicate and risking them with a big meal is not going to work out whatsoever. So yeah, very interesting. And gopher snakes, um, they don't need a lot of like lighting health with them. Not They don't really need UVB, but it's always good to have one side in the, clo the enclosure to always have a basking spot for them where they can sun themselves and have one side in the enclosure where it's slightly cooler. So um, temperature wise, probably between 70, from the 70s to the 80s is probably the best bet. So, but yeah, gopher snakes, I mean, like I said, do not expect those to be a great starter pet snake at all. 
figure I also let everybody know out there on that um, we are having a Black Friday sale going on with all my merch you guys online starting Wednesday, November 20, what day is it? November 23rd, everybody. And it's gonna go from the 23rd until Cy the following day after Cyber Monday, you guys. That's gonna be going on for the next five days. You guys having a sort of like a Black Friday and Cyber Day weekend merch sale going on, everybody. So link it's gonna be to the merch down in the description, everybody. So go ahead and get yourself some of merch, actually, that's gonna be on sale, guys. It's certainly not gonna be around for long, so go ahead and get it while discounts are only available at that time. All right, so I'm actually getting ready to do a quick photo shoot with a couple of my animals here in my in the office. And of course, you guys, you probably haven't seen my girl sprinkled cheese in quite a while. How you doing, sweetheart? And you guys can see she has gotten a little bit bigger since the last time you guys have seen her. And really, it has been too long since I've shown her on the vlog. But um, she's actually kind of being cooperative of being handled right now. She's kind of a bit defensive, though, at first when I opened her cage. So, but nonetheless, so she's doing absolutely a wonderful job, though. So hopefully she'll cooperate with the photo shoot, you guys. And it shouldn't take too long, nonetheless. So, but regardless, though, I can't wait to get a couple of photo shoots of my animals. So hopefully you girl will be a cute little star one. Day. You're absolutely adorable looking. <laughs> I just love this girl to death, you guys. She's just absolutely a cutie pie. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. All right, so the photo shoot, I guess, was all right. Um, there were, <laughs> had to take several tries actually um, with a couple of, for one of my animals, you guys. But as you guys can see, uh, we pretty much got it all done in here as well. This is our office, by the way. Um, and this used to be my sister's bedroom, by the way, too. So, but yeah, um, we did use my old Canon Rebel T7 to take some of the photo shoots and some of the photos turned out pretty good but um, I think with a little bit of editing with them on the computer I think we can actually improve the photos to make them look better so I'm not going to tell you guys on why I was taking these photos so but the, eventually down the road I'll tell you guys soon so but at the meantime though I'm going to go ahead actually start cooking some dinner because uh my mom is not home right now. Now, as much as I would love to put this particular snake at number one of the some of the best starter pet snakes, number two though has to go to corn snakes here. And yes, we are going to be discussing with that along with my girl Ariel here. And corn snakes, we have corn snakes have just been around for decades, you guys, in the pet trade. Probably it's going as far back as like what the late 60s, like early 70s, somewhere around that timeline. And since then, they have just been so amazing animals, you guys. And it's hard to believe now that more than, like, for the last, like, 20 plus years, there have been dozens uh, and dozens of different corn snake mutations have been created. And it's just absolutely phenomenal. Like, my girl Ariel, you guys, she is a ghost corn snake, which I believe it's a, cr which is bred between a aneurtheristic and, uh, I can't remember what the other morph is, you guys, but I know aneurytheristic is involved, you guys, so, um, let me know which one you guys think it is in the comments below, so, but nonetheless, though, corn snakes are just absolutely amazing animals, and as you guys can see, she's thrived in this enclosure now for about two and a half, three years, and not once has she gotten out, and, so, when it comes to corn snakes, they are super duper placid, very, very easy to socialize with. They are not that bitey, actually, believe it or not, as they get older. As babies, they're going to be a little bit more defensive, but as long as you actually like pro have to socialize and like, handling the animal from time to time, the animal's going to become more and more chill, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, corn snakes, um, they obviously do need a, so a lot of a good amount of room in here. Obviously, this is a minimum size enclosure for a corn snake. A 20 gallon tank is the smallest one you're going to go for an adult. But for a baby, maybe like a 10, 15 gallon. But for an adult, you can't go any smaller than a 20. Big enclosure? Um, probably a 40 to a 60 gallon if you guys want to do that. Um, and obviously, they get about four to five feet long, and I think the record is like six feet, I believe. So, but yeah, corn snakes are super easy to care for. Temperature range is probably from between like mid 70s to like low 80s, somewhere around that temperature range. Obviously, like many other snakes, you do need for most snakes a warm side and a bit of a cooler side over here. And these guys are rodent eaters. They actually are a rat snake. So. But technically, they're, the reason they call them corn snakes is because they have like a corn maze belly pattern. So, But uh, unfortunately, it's too bad that they did not make it to the number one of the top of the list. If you guys have actually stuck throughout this entire video towards the very last one of the starter pet snakes, you guys probably already figured out what the answer is. And I'm going to just say it right now. 
ball pythons. And ball pythons have obviously, just like corn snakes, they have been in the pet trade for many, 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 many years. And I think the first uh, ball pythons that were brought into the pet trade were originally, I think, back in the 70s, early 70s. And they were all wild caught because there was no captive breeding going on at that time. But since probably like the late 90s, there have been dozens, hundreds of muta ball python mutations have been created, you guys, from albinos to pides to blue eyed leucistics to um, GHIs, you know, and there's so many of them out there. So, and ball pythons are so docile, just like corn snakes are. And ball pythons that get about the same size as a corn snake, too, about four to five foot long. But there are some individual ones out there that can get about six feet long, but it's very rare. And these guys are kind of a heavy bodied snake, medium heavy bodied snake, about about a rainbow boa size. And these guys, as when they're young, they do eat frozen fuzzy mice. Well, depending on, you know, on what your baby ball python prefers. Because there are many times where baby ball pythons can be very, very picky eaters. So, and if you're trying to get your baby ball python to eat frozen thawed instead of live, just keep trying to offer it a frozen thawed mouse, fuzzy mouse, you know, for several times, you know, and if it doesn't, if it keeps refusing to take it, then eventually you're gonna have to try and give it a little assist feed. Now, I have assist fed my snakes before, but I don't do it a whole lot, you know, because a majority of my animals, they eat perfectly fine on their own. But ball pythons, though, once they reach to adult size, they are gonna have to start taking frozen thawed rats. So, um, and of course, ball python enclosure size, a minimum, I'd say the minimum is 20 gallon, but I actually prefer 40 or 60 gallon, in my opinion. But if you wanna go bigger, that's totally fine as well. Um, but yeah, ball pythons, absolutely amazing, you guys. And that some of those mutations out there, some of them are inexpensive too as well. But um, I think one more, if I do really wanna get you guys, it's been in the pet trade too for like 20 plus years, is, um, an albino ball python and I've only seen albino ball pythons a couple times in person but I really really would love to get one you guys because it's just absolutely a gorgeous looking animal the only downside is is that they are still a bit of pricey you know ranging from like 250 to like 400 dollars a piece so if I want to actually get one I'm probably gonna have to find a place of my own eventually but I am all I can do is just keep dreaming and hopefully in my hope and, and I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed and hopefully I can get one you guys so but yeah ball pythons still number one on this list many years later boys and girls and that's gonna wrap it up for today's video if you guys did make it to this far at the ending make sure that you guys make sure to leave a like for me you guys and make sure to leave a comment down below and tell me which of these starter pet snakes is your favorite one by the way so I'm gonna go ahead and let you all go I'll see y'all in the next one.